Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. So today I'm going to be talking about how to do well on the MCAT. I scored a 90th percentile on the MCAT and these are the exact strategies that I use to do well. So if you want to score high on the MCAT, just keep on watching. So for those of you who don't know, my name is Monica and I'm going to be attending Georgetown Medical School in the fall. Uh, so you know, make sure you subscribe to this channel because I post a lot about pre-med and the med school journey and all the tips and tricks that I learned along the way that I think could really help you get into medical school. And if you haven't done so already, go ahead and give me a follow on Instagram. Again, I talk a lot about pre-med and medicine and um, my personal life on there as well. So if you want to know more about me, go ahead and give me a follow on Instagram. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with this video. So I'm going to be breaking down the whole concept of how to do well on the MCAT into three different videos. The first video today, I'm going to talk about the six strategies that I use to score really high on the MCAT along with the mindset that I needed to build in order to do really well. The second video, I'm going to walk you through my entire process of how I reviewed my practice exams because that was a huge game changer for me. That is what got me from like the mid 500s to all the way in the 515 range. The third video, I'm going to talk about all the resources that I used to study for the MCAT, things that were effective, things that were not so effective, things that were a complete waste of money. So let's go dive right into this video and let me talk to you about the six strategies that I used to do really well on the MCAT. Number one, so from my perspective, this test essentially boils down to three different things. First thing is to know your science foundational concepts. I think this makes up about 20% of the exam. Second is knowing what is and what isn't important. It is a critical reading exam and you read a lot of passages. So knowing what is and isn't important is key to doing well. And this makes up about 30% of the exam. And lastly, the most important part of the exam is knowing logic and basic problem solving skills to get to the right answer. And this makes up about 50% of the exam. So now, if you can think about every question on the MCAT using these three different lenses, that's all you need to do well on this exam. So one thing that comes up for a lot of students is this idea of needing to memorize every single pathway, concept, topic that's ever come up in their pre-med courses. And that's just absolutely not the case. If knowing basic science concepts is only 20% of the exam, then only 20% of your time should be devoted to rote memorization. The rest of this exam is pure logic and problem solving. Number two, now, this is a critical reading exam. Even in the physics and chem sections, you're still reading passages and answering questions based off of the information that's given to you in the passage. So the biggest tip that I can give you on that front is to take the simplest meaning out of a sentence that you can. Now look, this test and the test makers can totally try to throw you off by giving you these complicated, wild passages that seem so complex, but what they're essentially trying to say is very straightforward. So if you can always look at a passage and read a passage with the eye of trying to figure out what is the most simple explanation and logical, straightforward thing that they're trying to say, you absolutely will do well on this exam. Number three, you need to learn how to focus. This is a really, really long exam. And one of the biggest things that this exam is trying to test in addition to your problem solving skills is stamina. So if you're reading a passage and halfway through you realize, I have no idea what this passage is about, or I can't even recall what this passage is talking about. Stop, slow down and go back. You need to understand exactly what the passage is saying and you need to build that muscle of focus and attention. So what's going to happen is that if you keep getting confused, if you keep getting lost, if you keep losing your focus and your attention, it's going to affect you in terms of your ability to answer questions, yes, but also the amount of time that you spend on individual passages and questions really adds up. Number four, know why you're picking an answer. The only way to do this is to know why the other answer choices are wrong. So you should always have a basic monologue running through your head, something along the lines of, okay, B is not right because of X, Y, Z. C doesn't really make sense. D directly contradicts the passage. A is right because of whatever it is. You should be reading every answer choice with the intent of figuring out why it's wrong. This only comes from practice. The more you practice, the faster this is going to get. Number five, practice. Practice a lot. Even when you're in the content learning stage of your studying, Make sure that you're doing practice questions. I see a lot of kids make the mistake of scheduling out two months to read the material and to do content learning, and then one month for practice. What you should do instead is spend a few weeks brushing up on the fundamental concepts that you need to know, and the rest of the time you should be doing practice questions, and then backfill any knowledge that you don't feel completely strong in. So a quick note about practicing, you need to be taking your practice tests under testing conditions. 
So that means no checking Instagram, no checking Twitter, none of that during your breaks or even during the exam. I cannot stress the importance of simulating the testing environment as you're taking the practice tests. On test day, your brain should not be trying to comprehend this new testing environment and these conditions. It should know automatically what is happening because you've been testing it and training it to be in that kind of environment all along. Number six, and this is the last, but quite honestly, one of the most important things that I can tell you, only study what you don't know. You should not be spending a majority of your time on things that you already feel comfortable in. That's not how you grow. That's not how you're going to do well on this exam. I know it's uncomfortable, but most of your time should be spent on identifying what you don't know and only taking a deep dive into those concepts that you feel particularly weak in. So there you go. Those are my six strategies on how to do well on the MCAT. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the mindset that you need to be building in order to do well on the MCAT. And I feel like this is one of the most underrated things and people really don't talk about it very much, but it's really hard to study and put all this effort in day in and day out if you don't have a strong mindset that's driving you. And in my experience, you need both strategy and mindset to do well on this exam. So two things about mindset. The first one is the number one thing holding you back from the score that you want is you. The most hurtful thought pattern that I've seen out there is this idea of, oh, I'm not naturally good at this. I hear a lot of kids say things like, I'm not naturally good at chemistry, or I'm a science person, I'm not naturally good at critical reading. So I discourage this thought pattern for a lot of reasons. One, because it's just not true. There's no such thing as naturally being good at something, in my opinion. I think the people who are naturally good at a particular topic have just had more time with that particular topic, or they just probably spend years focusing on that topic because that was something that they really liked and that's why it's showing up in how they're doing now. So you never really know the factors that go into naturally making someone good at something. But that's not why I discourage this thought pattern. The reason I do it is because it's not helpful to you. If you think you're not naturally good at something, you're constantly going to be working against yourself and you're going to probably put less effort in it, which means that it's going to end up showing in your results and which is going to confirm that thought pattern in your head. So bottom line, we're just going to remove that thought pattern from our head forever. There's no such thing as I'm not naturally good at this. The only thing that you should be focusing on is how do I get better at it? The second thing I want to mention about mindset is that when you go into this exam, I want you to be absolutely confident in who you are, in your abilities, and most importantly, in the amount of preparation that you have put into this exam. Look. If you found a question hard, chances are a majority of people also found that question hard. But what will separate you from a lot of other people is one, not losing your cool, to stay calm under pressure, and to trust in your abilities to reason and use basic problem-solving skills to get to the right answer. So we've come to the end of this video. I talked you through all of the strategies that I used, as well as the mindset that I had to build in order to do well on the MCAT. Make sure you check out my second video where I walk you through how I reviewed my practice exams and my third video where I talk you through all the resources that I use to study for the MCAT. So before I go, the last thing I'll say is that the MCAT is absolutely a beast. It takes a lot out of you, but I don't ever want you to define your worth by a test score or a practice exam score and don't let any of that change your path, change your passions. Um, none of that should be defined by a particular score on the exam. And that was my spiel. <laughs> Please let me know if there are any other questions that you had. I'm happy to answer any and all questions in the comments. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and make sure you subscribe to this channel. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.